Hey, everybody. You're watching the Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Rocky Carroll's here with us. You know him from the NCIS universe. Rocky, what's up, man? How are you? Hey, I'm good. Good morning. Good to be here. It's great to talk to you and really excited to talk to you today because you're directing the brand new episode coming up on NCIS. So listen, people know you for in front of the camera, but let's talk about the directing thing. What would you like being able to do this experience here? Well, you know, it's, you know I guess, I, and I've been given a nickname at work when, I'm, when I am behind the camera. You know, I'm now director, director, because I, I, I play the director and then I am the director. Um, you know, this all came about about maybe five years ago now. Has it been that long? Um, I, I was curious. Uh, I went to the producers and said, hey, I'd like to shadow the directors. I've been entertaining the idea of directing. And uh, about six weeks later, I was given my first shot. And I guess I must have done something right, because now um, I've got uh, about 10 or 11 episodes of NCIS under my belt, having directed. Uh, love working with the actors. Uh, I think one of the um, advantages of being an actor is that you speak the language of, 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 of the actors. So. You know, people have a misconception about directing. They think that a director is somebody who gives, who spends the entire day giving out orders. Um, really good directors don't have to give too much direction. A lot of times it's, it's, it's in the hiring, you know. What I've learned is really great leaders, they delegate, they delegate jobs to, you know, they find the right people to, to surround themselves with. Um, and I was taught years ago that one of the biggest, one of the most important aspects of being a successful director is casting the right people. So I've got that to my advantage because we got a terrific cast. Um, and it's been a great learning experience for me as well. You know, and, and this episode tonight, um, so, I, you know, I get to, um, I'm in front of and behind the camera, which sometimes it was a little hard for me to get used to because I like being able to wear just one hat. Right. Uh, so having to split my focus, um, you know, I'm usually the guy who forgets his lines when we're shooting, when I'm directing, because I'm like, oh, geez, I'm thinking about something else. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about the shot. So it's taking me a little getting used to that. But, uh, it, you know, I love the opportunity. This is the second episode I've directed this season. Uh, this episode is Gut Punch, where we find our main character, uh, Leroy Jethro Gibbs, played by Mark Harmon. He's been sidelined. He's been suspended uh, for conduct unbecoming. And... What this episode deals with is the ripple effect of his actions. Um, Team Gibbs, McGee, Bishop, and Torres have to now deal with the after effect of Gibbs's actions that got him suspended and how it affects them as a team. I mean, there's a lot going on here. And I think you just made a bunch of great points. You need to trust the people that are on set, right? The hiring happens. You're just letting them do their thing. And it's one thing for you to be in front of the camera. It's another thing for you to be doing both those things. So. What is the trickiest part of that? Because like you said, you're, you're splitting your focus here. So how are you able to pull that off? Where it's like, I got to direct, but I also have to think about my lines coming up in a little while. Well, you know, I, I like to have as little, I like to have as little time in front of the camera as possible when I'm directing, because it is, it's, it's, it is so, um, it's so all consuming. Um, and, you know, I tell people being a director for television is, I would imagine it was, it, it, this must be what it must be like to be the Royal Wedding Planner. There's so many things that you have that, that demand your attention and demand your focus. You know, as an actor, you come to work, you go into your makeup, you go to makeup and wardrobe, you get your, you know, you get all your seat ready, you, you hit your mark, you know your lines, and you're responsible for what you do. As a director, you're responsible for not only what you do, but what everybody else does connected to that. Hair, makeup, wardrobe, special effects, lighting, sound, camera, you know, and everybody, so that it's nonstop between each take. Somebody has a question about the lighting. Somebody has a question about the effects. Um, do we have enough blood? Is there too little blood? Is, should we have three gunshots or four gunshots? Is it, it's so it's 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 an it's an incredible um, uh, mindset to be in as a director because there's so many things that like demand your attention. Um, I really enjoy. I'm, I'm I'm learning a lot from doing it, um, and the actors enjoy it because when you speak the language. Uh, and you understand that if I'm working with six different actors, I may have to take six different approaches in, in, in talking to them about a scene. There's no one cut and dry way to talk to, to a, you know, a group of actors because everybody has their own way of working. And I, that's not just for, for, for actors or, or for, for entertainment, that's in any field. I think the people who are the best leaders understand that you have to have an individual approach to each, of your, each, 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 each member of your team. I really love that approach. And I think that's the biggest reason why the directing thing has worked for you, right? And 
I think it's funny when you talk about directing because some people like to just do one or two takes, right? Some people like to really drag it out. So what kind of director are you? Do you fall in the middle there or what's your style so far? I try to do, you know what? I, I, with, because we're, we're talking about sh shooting a 12 hour, sometimes the days can go 12 hours or sometimes even a little more. So, you know, I, you know, I get to use the sports term, the boxing term is like, I, I want, I want to make sure that everybody has something left for the late rounds. It's like, you know, when you get to the, when you get to the championship rounds, when you get to the end of the day, if, if we've spent, if I've shot 12 takes to get, you know, one scene of getting you to cross out of one room into another. And by the time we get to the end of the day, everybody's just, everybody's just fried. So you have to be judicious. It's like, um, some scenes are transitional scenes that lead to bigger scenes. So I'm not gonna spend an inordinate amount of time doing a, a million takes of a scene that's basically people walking into a room so they can have this big scene to play. So I, I try to, you know, I try to meet out the, um, uh, you know, to weigh the pros and the cons um, so that by the time we get to the, to, the, to the end of the day, we still have a little something in the tank. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll tell actors, it's like, if, if I think, if I think what we've done is good in one take, because usually what happens, and most directors will tell you this, you can do 15 takes of a, of a, of a, of a scene, you get into the editing room, a lot, nine times out of 10, you end up using the first and second take. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, another crazy thing, too, is just the growth of NCIS, right? I mean, at one point, you were just getting going with this. Never could you have imagined that it would expand into all these different universes. So. Take me back a little bit. What do you remember about auditioning for this role and how crazy has it been just seeing this show grow to what it's become? Uh, really, really crazy. And I, I'll tell you, I was very fortunate because I had had a pretty long relationship with CBS before before NCIS came into my, you know, came on my radar. Um, I had worked on several CBS shows um, Mark Harmon and I actually met on 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 um, uh, Chicago Hope mm. back in the '90s. We were both we were both members of the cast of Chicago Hope for three seasons, and the, the next time I saw him was uh, during um, you know the end of season five on NCIS was the first time the producers. I sat down with a meeting with the producers. Um, my, my audition was a little more. It had less to do with me auditioning and more to do with Mark Harmon saying, I know this guy, I like him, you should hire him. So uh, I, I, I was lucky, fortunately for me, the one person that I knew connected to NCIS was the star of NCIS. So he and I had always had a, a really good working relationship and CBS uh, basically said, hey, this is a guy that we've known and that we've, we've worked with and that we've, we've entrusted over the years in a variety of different roles. So um, that process, that was the easy part for me was, you know, giving, giving, being given the opportunity to come in. The hard part was the show was already well established. It was in its fifth season. And here I was this new character who was now going to be the, the, the you know, the, the heavy, uh, the boss uh, of, you know, and, and Mark Harmon's quote unquote adversary on the show. So what I had to do is figure out how to create this character who is, you know, um, the, head of, the head of the organization, he's the leader, he's the, he's the guy in charge, but how do, you, how do you keep him from me just sort of being a one note character where all he does is come in and bark orders? Um, so that's been the fun challenge for me is to create this sort of three dimensional character who also um, it, over time becomes, you know, a part of the team, even though he is the, he is the head of the organization. Um, and the writers gave me a lot of leeway with, with regard to that. Um, and having had a re relationship with Harmon prior to that was a huge help as well, because we just had fun going back and forth. And um, I, I'll tell you, the, the amazing thing is, I, I joined the cast of this show um, at the end of season five. And I literally thought to myself, hey, I came in on the tail end of a really good thing. <laughs> You know, hey, at least I can say I was here for the last, I don't know, two, two seasons. They probably got two more seasons left. So when it's all said and done, I can say I, I got on the end of this thing before it before it ended. That was 14 seasons ago. <laughs> I, I literally thought I was coming on the tail end of the series 14 years ago. It's funny how things work out. A show <laughs> from the 90s still benefits you today. And Rocky, yeah. it's great to see you doing your thing, man. Congrats on all Thank success. You. And we'll talk to you down the road. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.